It is time, it is time, it is the end of an era. Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 1 is about to come to an end, and this will be our last episode predictions for Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 1. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey over the last 10 weeks. I have had a great time, I've loved doing this, and I'm so glad to see that I've been able to become a weekly part of so many of your guys' viewing experience. That's all I wanted, that warms my little heart. <laughs> and so today, we will be doing my final episode predictions for Monarch Legacy of monsters, at least for season one. <laughs> What's up everybody D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing my Season 1 Episode 10 predictions for Monarch Legacy of Monsters titled Beyond Logic. Shout out to the title, I like that a lot. Obviously Beyond Logic is a reference to their little saying that they have in the show, Beyond Logic Lies the Truth, which I think is so cute. <laughs> I really like that name and I'm really excited to see this episode. Picking up where we left off in the last video, if you haven't seen our last Monarch Legacy of Monsters discussion, we talked all about the surface world. I got into how I think Godzilla could potentially be sending monarch messages through those gamma bursts that Barnes was able to decode. I also talked about some potential cameos that might pop up in this episode. We spend the whole time discussing the surface world, what's going on with Kentaro, Hiroshi, Tim, Monarch, all of that juicy stuff. So in this video, it's time to dive into the Hollow Earth, go into Axis Mundi and find out what's going on down there, how that's all going to play out, and what the final battle is going to look like. Before we get into the full discussion though, I do want to say, as I said in the last video, I have a plot synopsis for this episode as well as I have some HD stills and there's a video for this episode that's out there, a teaser video, so I want to discuss all of that really quickly. The plot synopsis for this episode states, Season Finale. The team struggles to find a way out of Axis Mundi. Kentaro and Tim make an unexpected alliance. As for the pictures we've seen, there is a picture of the Ion Dragon flying around that's actually from one of the trailers, so I don't really feel like I need to spend too much time talking about it. It's pretty cool. I think the visuals are great. And then for the other picture, it's Lee Shaw standing outside of that pod. Now, we do know they're going to return to that pod from the last last episode, the one that takes them into the Hollow Earth. I think that's going to be how they're trying to get out of the Hollow Earth is by getting into that pod. That's what the teaser clip would imply anyways. This picture kind of has this vibe of this might be the sacrificial moment for Shaw that I'm going to talk about later in the video. I think Shaw is going to have a big sacrificial moment and I think this picture could be that moment. The teaser clip shows Kiko, Kate, May, and Shaw all inside the Hollow Earth pod and they're trying to activate the Gamma Burster to try and signal a monster to get them out of the Hollow Earth only to discover that uh oh there's the Ion Dragon. So now that you're all caught up on all that, let's get on with the discussion. As far as Axis Mundi and everything going on there, well, many are saying that Axis Mundi isn't the Hollow Earth. That is a separate location. It's a place in between Earth and the Hollow Earth. If that is the case, and that is what they're doing in the show, which I don't think it is, I think they're just not calling it the Hollow Earth because Monarch doesn't officially acknowledge Hollow Earth until 2024 in canon, so there's a long time to wait before Monarch owns up to that stuff. I think Axis Mundi is simply just this show's interpretation of it, and why it looks different comes down to stylistic differences between the creatives involved, whereas they have a much bigger budget in Godzilla vs. Kong and the New Empire so they can show it off a little more and make it a little more whimsical. This show is clearly a much more serious show and so it's a more dense atmosphere. You can't see the world on top of the world. It's played a bit more serious and I think that's going to be the difference. As far as it being a world between Earth and the Hollow Earth, that doesn't make sense at all for a lot of reasons, but the number one reason is we've seen the Hollow Earth. We've seen the scans of the planet in Godzilla vs. Kong. We see the tunnel network leading to Hollow Hollow Earth, and we see Hollow Earth as a scan. So we already know what the planet looks like, and there's not a separate layer in between Earth and the Hollow Earth where this could exist. Also, it doesn't make any sense at all, because this was accessible from all places on the planet. You could get to it from Kansas, and you could get to it from Kazakhstan, and you wind up in the exact same place both times. The only way that's possible is if you're falling into the center of those two things, and the center of the circle is always the same. Therefore, the Hollow Earth would always be the same place you go. So I don't think they're going to introduce another realm in the middle of the the earth because that overcomplicates things and it's also like so if there's two hollow earth type locations why are both of them considered the home of the monsters one of them would be the home of the monsters the other one would be like a pit stop on the way there it doesn't work for me at all either way i think the episode will start out and we're gonna find that shaw while still trying to find kate has also been trying to find his old ship i think that's what he's gonna be searching for and i think he's gonna take may there and be like okay this is our base camp we can set up here and at the very least now we have a place to go to meet up and i think 
think they're actually going to discover that they're not the only ones headed there, as I think that's where Keiko has been living this whole time. That would make sense to me anyways, that she would find something familiar and live there. I think Keiko won't actually have been down in the Hollow Earth as long as it may have seemed. I think that she will have been displaced by time. Similar to how Shaw was displaced by 20 years when he went to the surface, I think that for some reason only 10 or so years have seemed to have passed for Keiko as she is roughly the same age. I don't think that the characters are aging at slower rates in this show. Maybe they are, as Shaw did contain radiation when he went back to the surface, but I think that it's just the time displacement, as Shaw is in his 70s in the show, and that makes sense if he lost 20 years of his life. He should be in his 90s, but instead he's in his 70s. That checks out. As far as Keiko's concerned, what if she just got zapped straight through time and wound up landing after Shaw? That very well could be what happened to her as well. So maybe the characters still age at regular rates, it's just that they wind up missing these enormous periods of time. And I don't think that our characters, upon returning to the surface, are going to wind up years in the future. It's possible that the episode ends with a twist reveal that they're like five years in the future and they're post-events of King of the Monsters or something. That's entirely possible. I think it's not as interesting because it limits your future season potential, and I think the writers probably know that. So by taking the normal device to get into the Hollow Earth out of the Hollow Earth, I think that device is going to be the thing that keeps them not dilating through time. I think there's going to be a super emotional reunion between Shaw and Keiko, and they're going to have a big moment together, and during this, Kate and May are going to have a big moment, and they'll probably finally smooch, and their love will fully be realized, and people will cry about it online, because that's what people do. So according to that clip we've seen of the episode, we know that they need a Titan to throw their pod out of the Hollow Earth, out of Axis Mundi, and so it seems like they're going to have to repair the Gamma Signaler in order to do so, in order to lure a Titan to them, so maybe Keiko isn't the one activating the Gamma Signaler. As far as the clip we've seen, it seems that they accidentally lure the Ion Dragon, who's already living in that location, and that's where all the chaos breaks loose. And I think in order to save them time, Shaw's actually going to get out of the pod and sacrifice himself so that the others don't get killed. I think that he's going to lead the Ion Dragon away from their pod just long enough for the portal to open up. I think they're going to need a Titan to throw them into the portal simply because it's too heavy for them to get that thing anywhere else to get it to move. Apparently the whirlwind is going to be what sucks them in. I think the portal is going to open up though, and it's going to be like this holy crap we've just accidentally summoned Godzilla moment where Godzilla shows up to find out why that Gamma Signaler is activated again only to come face to face with the Ion Dragon, and I don't expect the fight to last very long. I think it's actually going to be a pretty quick fight with Godzilla just beating the snot out of this dragon for a while. He's just not big enough to be a big threat to Godzilla, so I think Godzilla is going to wind up whipping out the atomic breath and blasting this guy 2014 style, and I think that could even kill the big guy. But I do think they're going to go with a pretty brutal finisher because the Monsterverse has always made sure to give very brutal finishers to its titans, so if it's just Godzilla atomic breathing the guy to death, that'd be a little boring. It could be a fun 2014 reference where he does another kiss of death on the thing, but I do think they're going to have some sort of kiss of death styled ending where Godzilla obliterates the thing some way, somehow with his atomic breath. Then I think Godzilla is going to return to the portal he came from, and by returning to it, it's going to cause that whirlwind that we saw in the previous episode, and that whirlwind is going to have enough energy to suck their pod back in and fire them up to the surface world. I don't think they're going to be displaced through time, but I do think Shaw is going to be left behind. Or dead, maybe he just gets killed by the Ion Dragon. I strongly believe that he could get killed because the MonsterVerse has a tendency to introduce big name actors and then kill them off, and I think that if you've got an actor as big as Kurt Russell, there's nothing more shocking than killing him off. Actually, I think the more shocking thing to do would be to leave him alive, but I have a feeling that they're going to kill him off, and I think that the Ion Dragon killing him could theoretically be fitting because it's obviously the first Titan he's ever seen, so having it be the last Titan he ever sees could also be fitting. I don't know. I just don't see him going back to the surface world with the rest of the characters. I think it's more interesting if he's left down in the Hollow Earth than he's still alive. And that would bring us to the ending of the episode, where as I've talked about in previous videos, I think a very beautiful ending to the show could see the full series come full circle, where we started with Bill Randa on Skull Island, and I think having a full circle moment where Keiko and Hiroshi travel to Skull Island in order to pay tribute to the place where Randa died could be very meaningful. It could be the perfect opportunity for a cameo from Houston Brooks. I don't know what actor you'd get to play him, Joe Morton, Corey Hawkins, aged up. I don't entirely know what you'd do there, but as we know in canon, Monarch already lives on Skull Island. As of 2012, they've moved on to Skull Island, and so I think this could be a very meaningful time to have them go to Skull Island and have this beautiful little tribute to Randa that seals the wounds that Hiroshi has suffered over his life and allows the two of them to move forward together with their lives. And maybe even when they're on the island, they find the old camera from the very start of the show, the thing that opens the series, they find the camera and they're able to watch the clip that Randa recorded at the start of the show and Hiroshi finally gets to see his father's final message to him, as they don't really acknowledge that yet. There's no acknowledgement 
that Hiroshi has been working off of Randa's files. Hiroshi has yet to acknowledge that. He has no meaningful fatherly connection to those files as of what we've seen, and so that could be a very good way to do that. And then you could just say that the Iwi discovered the camera shortly after the events of the 1973 expedition, and so they've been holding onto the camera this whole time. And maybe at some point Monarch got the camera from them. It's also just be a good way to end the show with Kong as well, who we started the show with. He's the very first thing we see, and so he could be the very last thing we see as well. As far as future setups for future seasons go, I think they're going to be fairly light on it, but I do think there will be some stuff. Hiroshi's work, I think, is going to be left unfinished, and maybe it will even be picked up by Apex and have some massive consequences for all of the characters. I think the show will end with Apex learning that Skull Island exists, and so that'll set up for future seasons, Apex planning to go to Skull Island to harvest the Skullcrawler eggs and do whatever else they do on that island. I think that's going to be something that happens. So I think at some point we're going to have that character Brenda return and she's going to learn that Skull Island exists. I think then Shaw is going to be left in the Hollow Earth in need of rescuing, which sets up for a future season and a future expedition down to Axis Monday to get him out. I think that Kate will officially join Monarch alongside Keiko and the two of them will become a new duo in Monarch. Meanwhile, Kentaro and May are going to be left out of Monarch, undecided, but they're in need of future adventures. They're there, ready to be called if they need them. And I think that Tim is going to have this friendship bond with all of the characters, and so he'll be their gateway into Monarch. And then also the final bit of setup that at least I would introduce is that the public has started to have backlash to Monarch's actions, which sets up for future conflicts, makes things more dramatic for Monarch moving forward. I do think that the entire thing where all the portals are flaring up is going to be left unresolved. I think that they're going to be on the brink of another G-Day, but that the portals will start to subside when the Ion Dragon is killed, and so disasters averted for now. But now they know that these portals exist, they know that more monsters could be coming, and so the future season is going to deal with what do we do about these portals? Do we seal them up like Shaw was trying to do, or is there a better way? Those are my predictions for the season finale of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. What do you think we're going to see in that episode? Comment down below and let me know. What titans are you hoping to see? What kind of finisher move do you want Godzilla to do on the Ion Dragon? And what are you expecting? Again, like I said, I'm expecting a very jam-packed, very fast-paced episode that includes a very fast-paced fight with Godzilla and the Ion Dragon. I don't think it's going to be a drawn-out extended battle sequence. So comment down below and let me know where do you think we're headed? What kind of setups do you think we're going to get for Season 2? And where might Season 2 go? Thank you guys all so much for watching. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below. And by supporting the Patreon, it is the most direct way to supporting this channel and making sure that I can continue to make videos like this for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.